is F Society IRC Podcast, a Mr. Robot show. I'm your moderator of this chat, Marosha Shai. Please note that this podcast will have spoilers. In this chat, we will discuss the underlying themes, historical influences, inspirations, technology, ethical dilemmas, and other inspirational insights we have gleaned from each episode of the first season of Mr. Robot. We will be bringing on experts to share their insights and knowledge with us in each chat. We will also be reviewing each episode of the first season, as well as the second season when it premieres. We are awake, we are free, we are alive for F Society IRC Podcasts. Hello, F Society IRC Chat. This is your moderator, Ferocious Shine. And this is a special episode in which we talk about the, the Washington Township Monument. This is a bit of a continuation of the previous theory that I have that has been modified with some information. But before we get into the Washington Township plan, uh, we're going to talk about Ecoin, uh, which was part of my original theory. I'm going to refer you back to uh, the Washington Township uh, episode, uh, Theory Part 2, in which I discuss it. not only what I thought was going to happen, but Ecoin as well, how they tied it tied together. It turns out that's not the case. They're completely separate items in Ecoin and Washington Township. But I felt that there were certain aspects of the e-coin uh, theory or thought that I had that might have some influence on the show. So it's a little bit of my moment of patting the back. The ticket to how e-coin was going to be more valuable than a regular dollars in the sense that, uh, as I stated, that Evil Corp was going to be the usage its largest largest status, if you will, to be like the truth, faith, and credit in the same manner the United States does by giving discounts for the usage of e-coin. Uh, we saw that with the process episode where Elliot uh, was buying the equipment. He saw, uh, you know, Mr. Robot noted that you know, e-coin was being, being utilized there and it was uh, 20% off if you use that coin. So no doubt not only was that uh, prevalent in that particular store in the micro center. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was maybe perhaps a somehow affiliated or tied with the evil corp overall infrastructure. But because they are a merchant payment service provider out there in the banking infrastructure, I would imagine all sorts of other types of merchants uh, worldwide or whether it's just localized in New York and rolling out nationwide or things of that nature, that evil corp will be doing this. So that aspect of the theory was good. Uh, the aspect about uh, quantum computers being built in the Washington Township plant, and that was a responsible reason why there was uh, the leakage due to uh, previous histories, you know, because the show is influenced by uh, real world events, you know, the IBM plants and Dell plants, and various other uh, technology plants have had issues with creating the microchips and processors uh, utilized world over, that a number of their workers have gotten sick. Uh, that was a theory that I had. That's what the Washington Township plan uh, was going to be doing and how it tied into uh, EOCorp and ECoin because I had believed that, and apparently it seems to be wrong, that the largest uh, evil corp as an organization was not enough to back ECoin. It had had something extra to be a quantum computer or a quantum computing algorithm to back it up to where it be so widely distributed and trusted. Uh, much in the same fashion as Bitcoin to kind of defeat the already existing cryptocurrencies out there, but in particular Bitcoin, which is the most popular coin out there and the one that has been utilized on the show and for the cell. So that is turn out to be true. And the reason why being is because it turns out the Washington Township plant is a nuclear power plant. Uh, something that was part of the Mr. Robot dream sequence, everyone thought it was an O2. The Simpsons, the television show, it turns out it was a hit to actually the nature of the planet itself. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that we're basing a lot of the assumption of the Washington Township plant uh, dealing with technology, which nuclear power plants are, but more specifically about computers because uh, Elliot's father opened a computer sh- you know, shop, Elliot and Darlene are hackers. So you, there's this uh, reasonable assumption that, much like, uh, you know, in the sense of Silicon Valley or certain epicenters, or there's certain uh, companies or certain industries or area people have some kind of affiliation 
or tied with it in some fashion. And it turns out that's not necessarily the case. Uh, the Washington Township plan is a nuclear power plant, and it totally changes the dynamic of what could potentially possibly be built in there. But before we get into the Washington Township plan theory, we kind of have to go back to season one because it's all going, everything is pretty much tied together, everything's building off. There's not a single on this show that is uh, not tied or influenced or is harked back to or one little tiny thing that we weren't quite observant about or didn't think was very important becomes irrelevant. And what I mean by that is I mean about the conversation at the end of season one, at the end of season uh, finale, in which Phil Price and White Rose on the Intercivility Farm before as uh, the Minister Zone met at the party. And they were talking about a hack, but they were also talking about the manga. In particular, I'm going to read a little bit about what happened with, with all of that conversation. So Bill Price goes to Zong, or White Rose, and goes, go ahead, what's on your mind? And White Rose goes, I'm not, I know you're not without your trouble, but we still haven't discussed the Colton lines. And Philip Price goes, you're really bringing that up at this at a time like this? And White Rose goes, you ask, I answer succinctly. Well, perhaps I was too hasty. I like for the moment to take it easy. Besides, plenty of other items on the agenda. The fucking Congo can wait. And White Rose goes, all oh, your trouble is weighing heavily on you? And Philip Wright goes, I'm not just surely why. I was told that you know the person's responsible. Oh, this is what Rayner says. And Philip Price goes, yes, yes, of course we do. And we will handle that person as we actually do. You seem a little preoccupied yourself. And Wright Rose goes, I don't believe in preoccupations. Philip Price chuckles. It's more of an observation, which is, the infamous uh, Emperor Nero played an instrument very similar to the one she's playing. Bill Ireland has it played as he watch. As he watch, White Rose goes, as he watch from Philip Price. So we have this little tiny conversation about, you know, Philip Price knows who's responsible for the hack, which, you know, White Rose also knows as well, and the Congo is mentioned as well as Colton. Uh, we're going to talk about another conversation that happened in season two, but what's important and key here is Colton and Colton lines, because it all ties into the, the concept of the nuclear power. Which brings us to the, the second conversation that White Rose and Philip Price had. Now, they had this conversation that I thought, personally, like a lot of people, it was tied to the e, e before bailout. And that they had some kind of strange alliance where they were aligned to ensure the financial security of the report. But it turns out that com- this conversation was about three separate projects, three separate agendas, if you will. And it really had very little to nothing to secure it on e report. Now, of course, Philip Price made sure that evil court is secure. But White Rose's agenda didn't necessarily align with Philip Price. It was more like Philip Price was a facilitator for White Rose's agenda. And this is the conversation they had at the beginning of season two, where they were over the phone, and White Rose was putting on her makeup, and, and Philip Price was talking. And they were talking about the progress of things. And Philip Price, you know, was saying, like, you know, he couldn't bring anything to the president's desk because the president wasn't, wasn't desperate enough. Uh, White Rose was asking about the UN vote, and Philip Price was saying he hasn't quite secured those votes out, and he's more focused on the bailout vote and the rolling out of the E coin. And White Rose was getting, that's when White Rose got the memo about the finding of the F Society uh, hangout from our FBI informant. And that was in the conversation ended. And so, there was also another tidbit where the phone call ended where uh, White Rose showed her assistant that Bill Price thinks that he, that he wants to go with the equine agenda to, to fix things. So there was a couple of things that went on with that conversation in the beginning of the season two. And what it basically came down to, in particular, was that we all thought these were all tied together, like the UN vote was has to do with the bailout. The bailout has to do with saving the people for uh, going to the president's desk may have to do more with the, the bailout. And a lot of this had to do with a little bit of 
subterfuge on the part of the writers to kind of hide these kind of hidden agendas because we had that, excuse me, that confrontation that Charlotte Price had with the Fed saying, you know, go secure the vote. And they're telling him the president won't, won't do anything with a bailout. You know, so we're thinking that whatever was hitting the president's desk was about the bailout, and it wasn't. And it's basically there were just four different things that White Rose and Philip Price are kind of aligning, not aligning together, together on. And that was the president's desk was to send whatever is in the Washington plant to China. So because these were not desperate, I guess you can say economically, Philip Price couldn't go to the president and say, hey, you know, China did this a solid by uh, buying up what initially the plan was to buy up those bonds and bail us out economically. Why don't we give them whatever is in the Washington Ocean plan? Two, the UN vote had to do with the Congo, which Philip Price was able to hear through the Terry Colby conversation for that UN ambassador to abstain. Uh, three, the bailout vote, which didn't happen in the way that uh, Philip Price wanted, was supposed to save Evil Corp financially. And then the fourth was the Ecorn thing, which gave Evil Corp uh, global control of the economy to, uh, through a corporation. So these are all these different things that were kind of happening together. And what's important now is because Philip Price didn't get that initial bailout uh, vote, and he's basically a blackmailing or playing with or dangerous being a hardball with uh, White Rose during um, their conversation was it in the process of what in during in it five that he was holding that Washington Township but hostage basically by giving it to the feds and everything in it would be discovered by the federal government if he didn't get that loan from China. So I'm thinking because now we know that uh, Terry Colby securing that UN vote, that there was a quick pro quo that China's going to do the loan at zero percent interest, and Phil Price is going to stick to the agenda and secure this UN vote and go to the president and allow for China to secure that whatever's inside the Washington Township plan in exchange for basically bailing out Evil Corp and bailing out the country. That whole benevolent China allowing China to become part of the great economic power and emerge and all that stuff that that conversation was. Well, what exactly is the Washington plan? And why is it so important? Why is the Congo so important? And what, is, what does it have to do with Col- the Colton mines? So what we have to do is we have to kind of have some understanding of a few things that happened. In particular, with the Terry Colby conversation where Philip Price was saying that, you know, Obama could say it was for humanitarian reasons, you know, due to climate change, the people are going to go through a civil war anyway. They're going to go through warfare, so it's better to give it to China anyways. And this has to do with the concept of resource wars. This is something that's been battering around uh, through the internet and through diplomatic stuff, and you might hear it occasionally um, and through news channels. And really, what resources wars are, and I have to all link to almost everything I'm discussing um, in the show notes, is this. So, a resource war, just to kind of give you the basic concept, and this is what uh, was hinted at when Philip Price made that kind of almost an off the cuff moment about the Congo, about climate change. Uh, I'm getting this from the Thomas Reuters Foundation News. Uh, this comes from their April 2013 article, and again, all this is going to be linked in the show notes. Uh, in recent decades, many of the bloodiest conflicts in Africa and Asia have been fueled by profits from the exploration of natural resources, including diamonds, timbers, and minerals. Efforts are being made to step up and clamp down on the trade of these conflict resources. So, for example, when you hear things like, you know, blood diamonds, uh, the exploitation of cobalt, which is a component for a lot of electronics out there, which is what is a key and primary resource in the Congo. It also is a component they can utilize for um, nuclear fuel, if you will. And we'll talk about that. Um, we talk about uh, the nuclear aspect of Washington Township. But resource wars, uh, water wars, timber wars, uh, the, the means from which a lot of a lot of different nations and countries and organizations and subgroups have gone to war and have been over resources. And this is something that has been hinted at uh, at the price. 
in general, in the world, what, what it comes down to is that a lot of the resources in the world are very finite. You know, once you dig up all the gold, there, there potentially can be no gold. Uh, same thing with oil; it's very finite. And then you have other resources like you know, timber and water, where we are depleting more than um, <clears throat> the Earth can really make. And so, as a result of it, there's less less of such things, and it makes things much harder and tighter. Uh, at the same time, you have the issue of, you know, contamination, which makes things uh, even worse. And then you have climate change, which is shifting all the weather patterns uh, around the world for places that used to be capable of growing food and growing their own resources and things of that nature are not capable of producing as much or not at all. So this is just a little hint about it. And it can explain kind of the dynamic that's going on here with uh, Evil Corp and, and, in this case, with uh, Zong representing. China, the Chinese interests, and that by going into the Congo, they're trying to attempt to control the resource of cobalt, which is a very key component in technology, and is also a key component in the fueling of uh, nuclear material, and like I said, we'll get into that in a second. And there's other types of resources within the Congo. It's a very mineral-rich area. Colton, this is coming from Wicca, is a dull black uh, metallic ore for which elements Nibia and Calcanium are extracted. Um, the Nibia dominant mineral for Colton is a cobalt, often the new original American name is cobium, and the candy dominant mineral is talite. Uh, Talium for Colton is used for manufacturing calcium capacitors, used in electronic products. Colton mine has been cited to help me find a serious conflicts, for example, the Enrique conflict and the Democratic Republic of Congo. So they're they're going in war there within the, the region of Congo, in the country of Democratic country of Congo, the Republic of Congo, if you will, oh, for these separate resources. Uh, approximately seventy one percent of the global tennis supply in two thousand eight was newly mined. Uh, the countries that do have mines are Australia, Brazil, Canada, and Congo is number four. Uh, and the rich in resources from all set, uh, all you know, studies that have shown is that the Congo uh, has the most of it. It is very rich in this particular type of mineral, and because this is the type of product that is used for mobile phones, uh, mobile phones are the means primary primary means of communication that uh, world over, no matter what country you're in, if you have a cell phone, you are connecting to not only another individual but the world in it itself. Uh, pretty much a lot of countries that are in uh, in the third world status economically, or even the second world status, if you will, have made leapfrogs when it comes to the communication because it's much easier to put up cell phone towers than it is to lay fiber optic lines. And because of that, and because of Wi-Fi signals and the uh, leaps and bounds made with that, people are able to connect out to the internet and make connections and economic uh you know, decisions, if you will, because of that, that, that leap over that uh, physical infrastructure, as hard physical infrastructure that kind of held back certain countries, if you will, is no longer there because of the mobile device. And so if you want to be able to have an impact on what is pretty much the, the economic engine of the 21st century, you want to control a lot of the resources. And in this case, it seems the Chinese are making a play to control the, the means of production of internet devices, which again speaks into the whole about the 1% type of the deal that Elliot is trying to bring down. Now how this all ties into the Washington Township plant is this. Uh, the Washington Township plant is a nuclear power plant. Uh, we know this from Angel's Encounter, and we know this from the hint from the 90s uh, sitcom thing that we saw of Mr. Robot in the title sequences. And it was at this place that uh, Angela's mother and uh, Elliot's father and Diamond's father uh, died as a result of the leakage that happened at this plant. And they got sick and they got cancer. Now, we, we know that the plant is still going on, but most importantly, it's still leaking high levels of radiation to the point that the man that Angel was speaking to was actually a little afraid and a little disturbed by the high, high levels of the information that she gave. Now, we also know that 
whatever is going on within the plant in of itself is White Rose's project. She has been working on this project since the 80s. So for the last almost 30 years, she has been developing a project, whatever that project may be, within the Washington Township plant. Now there's been a couple of theories. There's been, uh, she's developing um, bomb material or bomb for China. And it's two parts. There's some people that think she's developing material for China for, for bomb making purposes, in particular uh, Colton bombs. I'll have a link in the show notes uh, about that particular theory. The other is uh, enough material, like a dirty bomb type of thing, where it's possible for China to blow up the Washington Township plant and thus uh, devastate uh, America, if you will, the infrastructure of America uh, with the radiation and stuff of that nature. That might be stage two. The, the third thing that a lot of people have been talking about is AI technology. Not sure from my research personally how uh, the Washington Township at being a nuclear power plant ties into AI. Uh, for, I have not seen any research or development when it comes to AIs that is nuclear powered. I've seen AIs being utilized in, as a means to uh, better take care of plants and research when it comes to uh, nuclear power plants, but not as far as the power source or any type of material, if you will, associated with AI, but that's a theory that has been touted out there. Uh, there's been stuff like because of the references to Back to the Future and White Rose talking about time and how she's, uh, the time is its essence, like she surrounds herself by time. Uh, everything she does is has to do with time. You know, everything beeps whenever there's like a, she's done with something, you know, when time passes and she beeps and she's done with that very moment. Um, maybe it has something to do with a, a time machine because she's all into um, alternative realities, if you will. Uh, very sci-fi stuff when it comes to the AI and the, uh, the time machine stuff. Uh, I particularly don't think that is the case. I think the show is grounded enough in realism that, that they're not going to make that type of belief. I think they would lose a lot of credibility if that were the case. I know there's been a lot of seeding and all these different things, but I think it's more of um, flavoring, if you will, for the show and not necessarily the case that it's going to be either an AI at the Washington Township plant or a time machine, if you will. I think these are just uh, philosophies or uh, modes of people are thinking how they think about the world around them. And they think of different scenarios, if you will, uh, different options in life. Where they went, you know, choose your own adventure, if you will. Uh, when it comes to White Rose, personally, I think of all the different paths people could have taken in life. But the other thing is, I, I honestly don't think it's a dirty bomb thing that's going on in the Washington Township plant. And I also don't think the uh, evil corp would be so foolish or so arrogant to develop nuclear f- fission material to then someday at one point in time transport that over to China that that is extremely arrogant it also would be arrogant on the part of China for the fact that they are using an American company on American soil and on American plant to develop their fusion material for whatever bomb making purposes that may be um, I don't think that's the case I think it's something completely different uh, and a lot of it is based on the fact that China is one of nine countries that already have the bomb. China already has nuclear power plants within its country. It's already uh, has developed nuclear fusion material for its bomb making capacity. It's not nearly the same level as the United States or Russia, but it definitely does have the bomb. So for them to go outsource it, if you will, uh, seems very strange. Uh, They're also making a lot of leaps and bounds within uh, the nuclear development, if you will, when it comes to the use of Colton, or cobalt, I should say. So, this is going to talk a little bit about the fact that, you know, China is one of nine countries as part of the new club. Um, it has signed, you know, the Treaty of Measures of Further Reduction and Limitation of Strategic Defense Arms, or the New START. Uh, it's a signatory on the previous uh, new treaties. So, for them to do all that, it's, it's a little large leap as well. And out of the, I think, the realm of probability and possibility. So this is where the theory of, which I don't go for, but 
an aspect of it I agree with uh, that the Congo and um, Cobalt intersect is that there is a, a type of bomb you can make. It's called a salting, a salted bomb, where if you utilize cobalt, you know, basically creating a diesel device. Um, I have a link in the show notes of a Redditor who put this theory out there. I think it's one of the best if you're for the Washington Township plant is a, a bomb making facility that has bombs inside a bomb material type of a deal. But, uh, hmm. Research Fact J48, uh, he has a website called uh, on piratesatellite.com, which I will put in the, the show notes, uh, that talks about this particular theory and expands upon it pretty much almost all week about this particular concept. But you can also use the method of salting and, co- and, and, and cobalt with uh, nuclear energy. You can make and develop a particular type of nuclear power plant that not only um, is more efficient and more effective, but it also what it also does is it uh, is not as radioactive. Like you're not going to have a what happened to Japan, Japan when the tsunami hit uh, at power. That nuclear power plant, uh, oh, and I can't pronounce it, but the Fushimi uh, plant, you're not going to have a meltdown. You're not going to have a, a Chernobyl type of incident. That's not what this type of nuclear power plant is. It also uses less uh, material, much like the bomb, salted bomb, uses less material. In fact, cobalt 59, in this particular type of manner, if you were to sprinkle just one tenth, what is it, like one tenth of that ounce of cobalt 60 on every square mile of earth. Uh, granted, there's a lot, you could, you could potentially could wipe off the human race. Nothing would survive. That's why this particular type of uh, bomb is considered very deadly because not only is it extremely hot and explosive and, and, and does what all other nuclear bomb does and kill people within, immediately within a certain radius, gives everyone all sorts of cancer, but Basically, the area upon which um, it affects, especially with the rain, would be uninhabitable for generations. Nothing will survive. Nothing would live. And because of that, it's, it's something that is not developed, really. Uh, nobody wants to be responsible for having such a type of weapon. But supposedly, the, the Russians have one. But when it comes to powering plants and energy, that's completely different. This is something that the Chinese have making leaps and bounds in. Um, it's basically considered it's called a thorium-based nuclear power. And using this type of salting method and using cobalt and uh, the type of materials you would find in, say, the Congo, you could, in essence, create a very effective, very efficient not only nuclear power plant, but a power plant that could uh, do much more than what its current power plants can do. They'd be so more efficient. They're much smaller. You could probably put them closer to the cities in a sense. Uh, the the energy and stuff like that, the ability to build them is much easier. It's not as difficult as our other power plants when it comes to the mechanics of it. But this is something that, you know, China, which has uh, a billion people, uh, is an economic power in Asia. The ability for it to basically become a uh, very energy efficient when it comes to its resources. Right now, it still uses coal power for a lot of its uh, energy resources, which is not very effective. It's not very efficient. It's also very uh, causes a lot of pollution. It's affecting its neighbors. It's affecting its own region when it comes to the rains and the, the weather and the pollution. To be able to switch to a, a, almost a clean energy type of a system beyond just you know solar power plants would would put a uh, China on a very strong economic footing because not only would it be able to power its own resources, but any potential plants that maybe say, for example, that they're getting all that raw material from the Congo for all the manufacturing plants that they're already doing, they will be able to power that. But all the types of electronic devices that are coming online, like the Internet of Things, um, we're going into robotics for cars, robotics for everything. All the electronic power they need to be powered, even if you have nuclear batteries, you have to have a lithium battery factory that needs to be powered. All that type of material needs electricity, needs a grid. 
And we also to bring all the other nations within its region up to use their car. Uh, China could be not only just an economic power, but the energy power as well. And could, instead of, um, for the longest time, I say with like the last two centuries, you've been on primarily like the petrol dollars, it's called, where oil is healing the world's economy. Well, that started diminishing. And now you're going to have renewable energy is going to potentially be the thing that fuels the next uh, century or the next two centuries, if you will. And whoever has the ability to do that very effectively and very efficiently is going to be a great economic power. And it seems that White Rose, that might be her plan, if you will. If you, you buy it with the whole dark on the tie-ins, if you will. That she is securing the necessary feasible material necessary and the, the resources necessary from the Congo so that China can become the great economic because if you look at the way she had boxed Phil Price, even though Phil Price has turned and kind of boxed her in, because he has, you know, nine tenths of law, he has pretty much the physical possession of the White Township plant. Whatever that, you know, whatever it may be in there for real. Uh, this is my theory that it might be a uh, visual material that he, he's going to transport to China on behalf of what, you know, the they allowed to agree what they were going for. And something I guess they were planning on anyways. Um, if China were to successfully secure all that uh, and have their plants come online, because China is, you know, in the real world, planning on having 30 more nuclear power plants um, developed within the next 10 years. If they were all thorium based, if they were all salt and mined, and they had someone else already have the material done for them, all they have to do is insert and activate them, and those plants will be online. Um, a pretty easy, easy type of a deal if you think about it. The the whole, I guess you can say, uh, hold up is getting everything out of the Washington manner. And that's why it comes back all on the president's desk. Right? Bill Price was supposed to somehow, because the president, allow whatever in the Washington plan mm-hmm. to go to China. But the economy not desperate enough for such a growth. They had to do that. But I guess now you can say with Evil Corp collapse, which is what White Rose secured, so what White Rose did, she needed to make sure that Bill Price is desperate enough to get these things going. That now that my case, Bill Price go to the president to secure uh, on on the desk, whatever is in the Washington Township went to China, and then somehow uh, be able to do the Congo deal, which we, we learned about uh, with the, the last man, uh, Harry Kobe conversation. This throat. now China has all these adults, or at least white rose stuff, uh, after Zhang, if you will. And I think that's pretty much what's going on here. It was what we had here with the, the conversation with the giving the Congo to China. And be able to go to the president to say whatever is in the Washington Township plant to China. I personally think it's a cobalt nuclear fusion material to the Chinese, or it could be a completely different type of energy source that uh, has been theorized that I'm, I'm not very familiar with the energy area, I'm not an engineer or anything like that, that is being secured and safely developed there, if you will, being sent to China and China just turns it on. It could be something like, I don't know, something very weird, but very zero emissions, zero everything, and that could basically revolutionize the world. And a lot of time and effort has been able to secure it. I, I honestly think it's not bombs, but energy. It has to do with economics, because everything about the show has been about, you know, economics. Is whatever that next hurdle, that next leap, if you will, to secure the 1% economic foothold. Uh, we see that with Evil Corp. Equal. Uh, they're trying to secure their economic foothold in the world by basically being the, you know, creating their own currency and being the banking infrastructure of the world, being more than just, you know, just greater than the Fed, greater than the national state is going to be equal up there. Everyone's going to turn to. Now, the thing I think is key is whether or not whatever it is in the Washington Township plan is actually going to go to China or they're going to just turn it on. Because what we have been seeing on the show is there's been a lot of brownouts. Uh, com, uh, you know, com, whatever the New York-based uh, electric company out there, their workers are on strike. So they're having these rolling blackouts. Uh, I'm sure besides New York, uh, it looks like a even bit of Jersey, if you will. Uh, other parts of the eastern seaboard are no doubt are affected. If whatever is in the Washington Township plant, maybe it's not the feasible material that's going to be sent to China to uh, go into their salted uh, cold, uh, uh, cobalt uh, nuclear power plants. Uh, 
it could be this next wave of very zero emission, very effective, very efficient energy source. If it were to come on, like it would just go boop, and all of a sudden it powers the entire eastern seaboard, just one plant. There's one power plant does it. Granted, it has all this radiation, leakage, and all that stuff, but whatever is in there, it powers the entire eastern seaboard, all the way from, you know, Maine, all the way down to Florida, if you will. And that is also a game changer. And it also puts, it, puts Evil Corp ahead. It also puts China and White Rose ahead. And whatever that brilliant next wave thing that she thinks is going to change things, if you will is going to be, the way she talks about this project is going to be the new wave of humanity comes on. It, it will be game changer because now not only do you have this new energy source that it has literally just coming from one power plant, powered the entire eastern seaboard of the United States, but it's controlled by both China and Evil Corp. So there's a lot of corporation and national stakes mix, mixed in there. And the, the crux of all of this that we kind of know with the White Rose and Philip Price plan is, is we don't know how Elliot and F Society fits into all this, really. Because Evil Corp, in, in a sense, White Rose are responsible for the death of Elliot's father. And I find it very disbelieving that Elliot doesn't know White Rose was in charge of the Washington Township project, this project that poisoned and killed his father. Um, it would be interesting to see, if, like I have stated before, in the theories that he's using all this to lure White Rose out. To lure her out in the open and be able to take her out as well as he did before. I keep thinking about like all the little bits and tidbits that are part of the show, how everything is connected. I'm wondering if the, we saw the very beginning of F Society when Elliot didn't remember um, he was working for some company, this Infoset company. And Darlene hit him that it might have been Evil Corp. But it could have been something different. It could have been an Evil Corp project. And he basically took out their servers. I'm wondering if that project, the servers, his ability to hack it and prevent it or whatever, um, might have been eCoin. And so he might have some backdoor access to eCoin uh, that can still, you know, shut down Evil Corp. Or maybe he has some backdoor access to the Washington Township plant. Because I imagine that that was his whole focus, is getting these people, these the people that were responsible for the poisoning of his father, that he would have all the available information possible out there about this plant. I wouldn't be surprised if he had some kind of backdoor access to that plant, and he knows whatever the project is. Um, maybe he's going to sabotage it. Maybe he's going to expose it. Maybe he's going to shut it down. And the final thing is the e, e Corp servers. He still has, you know, those servers are still encrypted. So he has the encryption keys. So those are in play as well. I mean, he can always unencrypt those servers at any time and dump all of Evil Corp's uh, nasty secrets out into the world. And I imagine, again, the Washington Township plant would be part of that. Not absolutely certain, but they're. There's something, like I said, with this whole thing with the White Rose stuff, that the fact that Ellie is working with her, it just seems off now that we know as an audience members what that is, you know more about her history, know more about her, that Elliot doesn't know this. And then again, it could be that Mr. Robot is keeping that information from Elliot, or as I talked about how there's a third personality, maybe the original Elliot is keeping the hacker Elliot in the dark for whatever reason. But we'll see. Uh, we'll see how things play out. Uh, this, the season finale is broken up into two parts. I'm looking forward to both of these parts and seeing if, um, you know, my theory is paid out, seeing more about, uh, you know, eCoin and how it's going to be. We see more of it in the, um, the background of the show, like on businesses and commercials or anything like that. Um, see what exactly the Washington Township plant is. And more importantly, what is stage two? And if the Washington Township plant has anything to do with stage two at all. So that's it. This is my theory. You know, I think the Washington Township plant, again, is um, either creating a nuclear fusion material that uh, is going to go to China so that they can create a more efficient and become an economic energy power in the region with all their um, salted cobalt uh, reactors that they're developing or they somehow white rose has developed the next wave of uh, 
very effective energy um, system in there that ha- utilizes nuclear power and is going to attach to the Washington Township plant in some fashion. It's going to come on. And that's pretty much it. Uh, everything's linked in the show notes, in particular about uh, theories about the bomb, about AIs, uh, even some, um, even though I didn't talk about it on this particular theory about possibility of extending one's life as a theory has been going on about the Washington Township. Again, there could be like a time machine component in there. I don't have that in the show notes, but there's been some pretty far out theory. So thank you for listening. And until next time, I'll get off. Thank you for joining us on this chat. You can find us on all podcast outlets such as iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, MixCloud, and any podcast catcher. You can reach us on Twitter at FSocietyIRC, our website at FSocietyIRC.xyz. You can email us at FSocietyIRC at ProtonMail.com. Our music attributes are under the Creative Commons license number three. The intro music is by Monk. The song is called The Planet Shakers, a paragraph remix. Our outro music is by Trevet Halbuka, and the song is Elfi Kaba, as well as Korna, and the song is Beans. You can support the show either via the QR code in the show notes by contributing with a Bitcoin, or through PayPal, and there's a link in the show notes where you can PayPal me under Halusha Shai. If you're very into uh, cryptocurrency, you can also put me through uh, Chain Chip at Halusha or at one name at promotion. Thank you very much for listening. I look forward to hearing from you. Logging off. This has been a Hiroja Shad Space Odyssey Network production. <laughs>